how beautiful is that, everybody? That again is um, that is a day in Hawaii by Makana and Slacky guitarist Makana, and uh, that's from his brand new album Hawaii Interlude. And Nancy, I mean, that's a sunrise to me. I know that makes me just all. It's like it's so nature. Like the sun and, came up and the flowers opened up and then they bloomed and little birds are like, oh wee, it's morning. No, <laughs> it, it's so true. It's like hello, we're here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just so we're peaceful. And I know it's peaceful and beautiful, but uh, that is his new album, uh, and the whole album is just so That's beautiful. Amazing. And you think about a Hawaii interlude, and at the same time, you think, you know. We need to go back to those spots that bring us nature and protect them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's so important about what he does is that he stands up for nature, the land, and the people. He does a lot of mm-hmm. good stuff. So everybody, he's a good guy. dot com. He's very, yeah. he's very cool. He's and a good guy. We've had him over on the show a few times over the years, and um, he's just always doing good things. So I always appreciate playing his music. It puts me in a good zone. <laughs> It's like, mm-hmm. yes, remember this. This is important in life. Yep. But we've had a great show today. Unfortunately, our friend Tanya Ortega will not make it on the show uh, from oh. the National Parks Arts Foundation. Yeah, you know, she's been flying in and out. And, and you know, I have to say, this it's a very different era right now with this whole COVID thing. And I just, it's everybody's scrambling to make things work. And yeah. you have to understand, she's putting... Uh, Artists and residents in national parks, everything closed, then it opens. Um, so there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes sure. with what she does. And I, I think um, sometimes people may not realize how much goes on. There's permits. Yeah. There's getting the artist to the place. Oh, now you can't do an event. Now you can. It's like that. And it's like yeah. that in every destination. And so really the National Parks Arts Foundation, what they do is incredible. I was saying this on the show earlier, but artists of all walks of mediums, you know, whether you're a singer, whether you're a writer, a composer, a a potter, a ceramicist, a sculptor, you know, you can create whatever you do in creativity. um, They invite you to apply. You apply to be an artist in residence where if you win that application, which not win, it just does get juried. People, she has a whole board of, um, art people and esteemed art people that look at your work and if it's a fit for that specific residency then they will give you that honor of being in the park for a month housing sometimes there's stipends that go with it from one to two thousand dollars and you can stay there for a month and create and i think that is amazing and um ah she's here she is here tanya you made it (laughs) i'm just putting you right on hi did did you hear Hi. how I was talking all good about morning. you? How how I good did. you are. I came in right on that. I was like, wow, that. I you. know. <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna make it. She's here. I'm all like, she does so much work. Look at what she does. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good. a beautiful, beautiful morning in Hawaii. So so oh. far, it's it said it was gonna be. Uh, cloudy but it seems to be sunny so that's the news from hawaii <laughs> well here in pennsylvania it's been raining but now we got foggy green it's beautiful and green <laughs> it's foggy but um apparently i did things to our show at the beginning because i try to do the polka and everything went you know down the toilet i shouldn't do that you know but it's very does it have to do with here. the polka yeah, I the, think the polka somehow time, curse it, and I uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, no, it's an the polka is fun. I thought I should try, but I didn't make it. But but listen, we're near Gettysburg. Check it out. Well, we're in Pennsylvania, so therefore we're near Gettysburg, and that's one of your residencies. So I'm going to do everything in my power to get to Gettysburg to get while there. we're in in this state, and check it out after oh, all the interviews. That- that would be so cool if you went to Gettysburg. Yeah. Um, they are, you know, they they just, uh, well, they were at the park, of course, the National Park Service, but um, they're, they're kind of just getting back rolling again there in the last uh, month or so. That mm. I have to tell you something. So these residencies um, that we have, and we have other things too, workshops and whatnot, but um, 
the uh, Gettysburg, because of COVID, we had to delay uh, the mm-hmm. residency, and the sure. NCS at Gettysburg is trying to work out to be able to make sure that those artists that were selected will be able to come uh, mm. soon. So we're working out those months, which is very, very cool. So uh, we've got to give kudos to the NPS at Gettysburg, definitely. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. And and the, that residency, and, you know, I was saying it's a month-long residency, you have a sp- two special residencies for Gettysburg. One is the the Poetry Foundation, you work with them, and then also for veterans, one just for veterans, right? Yes, we have a, I think this year, um, this last year, uh, we have two or three for veterans. And we have um, the Poetry one, and yeah, the Poetry Foundation has been great. We are going to be doing the um, the, the tour um, probably next next year. So that's going to be great too. So yeah, it's a really good awesome. residency and it's beautiful and you get to live right on the battlefield in this, this great house that they refurbished and decorate. It's really, really great. I understand the well, pastoral setting that people talk about, you know, at Gettysburg, having just arrived in Pennsylvania, um, just looking out the window right now, I'm like, this is pastoral as it gets. But then there's all these mountains, and I, I think it's one of the most beautiful places. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. We've traveled since since our last uh, first Friday NPAF show, the National Park Foundation show we do every first Friday. We talked with the Dry Tortuga, uh, the Flying Tortuga Brothers, right? And because yep. they're getting on their way to go and stay on the island, you know, the Loggerhead Key, their own island for a month in the month of September. And, you know, we were in Lubbock, Texas. Tanya, we have been all over since then. We have been, we went from (laughs) Lubbock to Hot Springs, Arkansas, to Tyler, Texas, the rose capital of the country. And then, and Hot Springs is cool because it's the whole town's a national park. And then we went to... Natchitoches, Louisiana, very art town too. And then we went to, oh, then we went to Tampa, Florida. Then we, we, we over this week, we starting Monday morning, we went to Savannah, Georgia. Then we went to Asheville, North Carolina. And now we're here. <laughs> so there it is. It's quite crazy. And I was just thinking about all the places and the art, like Savannah, Georgia, man, I want to see a residency in there because they have the school of, the uh, there's a the school of SCAD. art and design or something yes yeah. SCAD. um how do destinations contact you to be a residency because our friends over in san benito county california that was just thought they were just on the show they're they're like please we want to check this out and i'm like how how hard is it to take on new places for you that's a really good question um, they just need to mail admin at nationalparksartsfoundation.org, and it's as easy as that. And then we have to put them on a waiting list, um, unfortunately, because uh, all of these parks have to apply for our program. So they apply, and then we we go and we see what they have to offer artists. If they, you know, do they have a great place to live? Do they have a studio? Do they have a isn't necessarily required. A studio is not necessarily required, but we like to make sure that artists have a really great place, which which is um, kind of an anomaly, I think, in residencies. We're pretty we're we're pretty picky, so we just want to be able to offer artists, uh, you know, a place where they can really, really be inspired and flourish. So that's all it is. You just email. And then we check it. We we run the numbers and look at the place, and then then you have a residency. Mm. It's really pretty simple, <laughs> as long as we the board agrees to it. And yeah, that's, that's so that it. can yeah, this is this is cool because I think so many destinations. You know, I know that the event part of it because when you're an artist in residence, there's always a workshop or an event that goes with it. So is that changed up? Because that's the one thing I know that you were, you know, running around the last time we talked to you, like, well, what, what do we do? How do we make this virtual? Is what's happening, you know, in the future with that? 
they've become virtual, and it's okay. been very successful. It's interesting because, um, you know, if the artist was also savvy with the Internet, which as an artist, you're an artist. You don't necessarily have two jobs. You, don't, you aren't necessarily online. So we've been figuring out uh, ways, uh, whether it's Zoom or things or recording for later, to put out later, um, to be able to have people online instead of in the public. So it's up mm-hmm. to the artist to say what they want to do. And we've, we've actually, uh, last year, you know, we chose artists and their proposal for a public event. Uh, or, you know, sometimes artists want to do many public events too, many, many workshops or something like this. Um, we had to talk to the artists. And, again, a lot of this is consulting the artists. What, what do you want? And we said, we, you know, obviously we can't do anything in person right now. How can you do things online? If you can't, then, we're, you know, we got somebody from the area who's a videographer and figured it out from there. But every single one of them was able to, to do something that uh, probably will be aired later uh, in a bigger event. Um, mm. So it's been working out. It's actually been working out really well because of a couple things. Um, number one is the audience is much bigger online. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we're reaching millions of people instead of, you know, 100, 200 people that can come to the park for an event. So we're we're reaching a lot of people. So I think what the future holds is um, we are going to try to make everything online. If the parks agree, if the National Park Service agrees, I think that there needs to be the bigger audience. I think, you know, it, it was very hard in, in the beginning before pre-COVID to say, oh, you need to do this extra thing. You need to record yourself when it's not necessarily an artist forte. But hmm. now we're, we're able to do that better. Um, so even in the future, post-COVID, we want to be able to reach this huge audience of millions of people because then the people on the other end, the audience, can look at how important and beautiful these parks are and then yeah. able to, you know, think about mm-hmm. the preservation and the conservation that goes into preserving these wonderful places. So, And it's not only being live, because, you know, we have issues with being live sometimes, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Today's been a doozy. Did somebody give us Friday the 13th or what? But and No, no it's just the weather. It works, it works out. But here's here's the thing, I think what's beautiful about it being virtual is that it's, oftentimes, not every format, often is there for people five, ten years down the road. So it's actually another piece of documenting history. And it's part of park history at that point, part of the history of the artist as well. So I think that is something that's beautiful because I know even just with our magazines, people are still reading ones from five years ago. I don't, you know, know, (laughs) that's that. And I'm like, okay, but if, you know, just don't go and read the event news because it's not happening right now. But, you know, so <laughs> I, I think that is a cool, cool thing about the virtual events is that a lot of times it can be saved. And now I think we're going to have a lot of virtual museums of virtual things that happened. We're going to have to have a museum somewhere. Someone has to open a museum for virtual things that happened. I don't know who, but Tanya, do you feel like making yeah. up? <laughs> Just set up a museum. I do. Another thing. But, um, yeah, you know, a lot of the um, events that we did have were recorded by the Park Service themselves, and they go into the archives and, and that kind of thing. But it doesn't have the, the reach. They, you know, they, the copyright is so that the public can see them and use them, but it takes so many steps to get to them that um, – it's, yeah, hmm. this this brings it brings it to so many more people instantaneously. Hmm. So it's fulfilling the park's goal too by reaching a lot yeah. of people quicker. And and that's and that's a light footprint for the park too. We want mm-hmm. people in the park, but we also want a light footprint. So it's a that's a good balance. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So you talked about um, the the process for destinations to apply, and. What about the artists? You know, this application process, um, 
there's a fee. And so that's often, I, you know, I get artists saying like, well, they're, they're charging me. I'm like, well, they're a nonprofit. They have to survive. Otherwise you won't have a residency. That's kind of my response. And <laughs> maybe that's just, you know, but isn't that true <laughs> at the end of the day? Well, let me tell you this, that that is true, but also the, you know, the National Park has their their own residencies, some of which we consult, but they, they do themselves, and they also have a fee to apply. But let me just give you an idea right now of the residencies that are coming up and the ones, because we have, we've never denied an artist an ability to apply. In other words, we have waiver, a waiver process um, that oftentimes is 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 way ahead of the deadline. So if if you want to do a waiver, you're going to have to apply apply for that way ahead. And again, we've never said no, but people do need to pay attention to that. But um, we keep we've been keeping at least one a year, a very prized one open for free and sometimes at every park will have one open for free so there's one in Hawaii that we opened for free this year and compared can you hear me still yes uh oh mm-hmm. I think, oh okay yes. the number of applicants that applied to the free one is around 700 hmm the number of applicants that compared to another one, the exact residency, and paid, you know, contributed, is six. Hmm. So uh, it's, yeah. it's a little it's a little hard too because as an artist myself, I'm like, wow. The uh, yes, I'm I'm the even hmm. if I'm the greatest artist in the world, there's going to be you know. Six, seven, eight, a thousand. We've had over a thousand people apply to one that that there was no money money contribution to, and then the other one, you know, the numbers are are really really low. So, oh wow, we um we had a marketing company put that out publicly um in all social media in January or February, I think it was, and we got so many people mad at us for for putting out people that have been asking, you know, what's the difference if I apply for this and this? A totally, totally fine question. And that is the number one difference. It takes so many hours to apply to these things. And I have four years applied to these things myself, not these, but other ones. And I, I want to know that there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people also applying instead of um, a select few. So that's, that's a huge difference. And we did get a lot of people very mad at us and by the way, it was a slip. It was a company that we hired um, for, you know, PR and that kind of thing. And we hadn't approved them them telling the public, but it's fine that they did. It's the truth. And people thought that we were trying to manipulate them somehow uh, into applying with those statistics. But uh, but it's been an ongoing an ongoing discussion here of how you know how do you tell people like you're going to put you know two to six hours into applying for this thing and there's just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people or the ones that yeah. uh, people contribute to, uh, that gets knocked down like hugely. So we, uh, sure. we, we uh, got a lot, of, a lot of hate for being truthful about that one, but I'm putting it out now, so but, there but you that, go. But that normally happens <laughs> when you, some, any kind of truth but, goes out there, people freak okay, out. Okay, but... <laughs> But here's the thing, as as an artist, I know that applying to be in art shows, no matter what, whether it's a residency or an art show, a local one or one across the country, um, and I know from the artist's point of view, because they want to paint or um, they want to create something, they want to sculpt, um, they're not always um, on the forefront for marketing or portraying themselves or putting themselves in the public because their efforts are in creating the art piece. And so there's like this yeah. two mind thing you have to do. And a lot of artists feel like as soon as you cross over to the, Oh, I have to sell it or have to market that in some way it denigrates their art, you know, and, and that is an old 1800s kind of 
thought process that needs to be crossed. You know, in back in the old days, they had patrons that would, oh, you can yeah. live in my castle while you create and and you do your thing and you get fed and you can do this and that and that. Well, sorry, it's not like that anymore, people. And it's <laughs> I, I I would like that. Thank you. <laughs> no, but it's no. I, so would I. But it's that's gone and done. And so now, if you're going to be an artist. Um, you're either doing it as a hobby, per se, and not trying to sell it. But if you're going to be an artist, you have to join the real world and learn how to function on the basis of, I'm going to go apply for residency. Yes, people are going to want you to fill out a form. And you're going to have to have a resume. And you're going to have to have details. You're going to have to prove what you say. And, I mean, like everybody else who does anything else. You know, it, yeah. and I think that's a stepping stone that a lot of artists stumble with. And it's just because we want to make art. We don't want to. I'm sorry. You know, that it's that's a step. That, it, it, I'm sorry. It just has to well, happen. It's kind of like doing getting a grant or I don't know anybody in, in you know, that no matter what, if you buy a house, you have to fill out forms. Exactly. If you buy a car, you have to fill out forms. It's like yeah. no matter what you do in life, you have to fill out forms, but it's a process, and you have to it it you you either want to do it you know or don't, and if you want to do it, that's the way it kind of rolls, you know. I think it's important because when you know the way your your system is, Tanya, I think mm-hmm. is great because yeah, your your awesome. residencies are so darn special. I'm watching yeah. my language. Aww. I just want to tell you. Your, your residencies <laughs> are that good. Mm. I mean, who gets to go on a private island, you know? Yeah. And the Keys, the That's Florida true. Keys for a month. It's who gets so to true. go to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, stay in a six-bedroom house overlooking exactly. the ocean, and be able to go in the park and just to be able to create for a month? You know, it's like like music residencies mean that you have to go to work every day and perform, not create. Right? You're going to work well, every day. I have you're to tell you. Sing. Oh, yeah. You're going to be inspired. But I've got to, I've got to tell you what we've done, even to some of the opportunities now, to be able to let artists overcome the, um, the entire filling out of the forms and everything. We have residencies. And we're, this is the second time we've, we're trying this, by the way, where all you do and fill out your name and the people that are going to come. It's a, maybe a five-minute process. And you just put your website or and or your social media down there. And mm-hmm. then we look at that. It's a lot of work on our end to do this, by the way. The panelists yeah. do not like it because it is a lot more work. But And then sure. we just go to your website, look at your stuff. Um, and we give the opportunity too to say you can you can also do the usual stuff where you put in your proposal and all of this right now. But we're just going to look at your website and anything you already have up, <laughs> and and then we will get back to you and say this is something we are interested in. Um, so we've tried to actually cut the paperwork back because we're all artists on this end, and we hate that too. And it yeah. doesn't have to do with art; it's a it's a necessity. You have to be yeah. able to can do that like you said but um, yeah. we're, we're still trying to make it easier on artists by um, and this will be the second run the first one run we did it and on this end it was so much work that it was uh it it was it was too it cost too much on this end to have that many mm-hmm. people going through and looking oh maybe this sculptor will be inspired to do a tree but we don't know because we you know so that kind of thing so a lot of the residencies, the opportunities we have up now, maybe maybe even half of them, um, are just send us your website and social media, or you can do the usual process, mm. and you'll that's be cool, judged on that. I think, I think that's it's, cool. It's, yeah, that you offer both, because um, we are aware of, of lots of different artists who have really um, – Check your website out before you send it to Tanya to look at it. That's what I'm going to yeah. say. Yeah, but I think most <laughs> artists at this point, depends. it depends what kind of artist, right? Musicians, a lot of yeah. time, will be a band camp site. Or, you know, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of artists end up really u- utilizing social media as their website. 
you know, right. and I, I just encourage everybody having going through this right now, don't do that. Because, listen, I've been locked out of Facebook for over two weeks, including our business pages. Thank you to a wonderfully um, company that had a security breach, and I was breached. And I don't have a personal Instagram account now. I do not have a personal Facebook. And Big Blend Radio and TV magazine, nor does Parks and Travel magazine, have Mm -hmm. a Facebook page. So if you think you can rely on social media for your website, so mm-hmm. that's a good again. point. That's a really good point. <laughs> because if you have a website, and I was banned, this is because I'm traveling, so I have a security breach to get my password and email address. They start spamming email out through my email, which is connected to our okay. website. Our hosting company says, hell no, hell no, cuts me off. I can't even look at our website. Of course, Nancy, <laughs> Madam Geek over there, calls them. They're like, hey, no, it's fine. It's you. But I'm traveling. We're driving from Natchitoches to Tampa. And every rest area, I'm checking things, everything cool. So <laughs> here I am with a log on Facebook, a different oh. town every few hours. And they're like, oh, she's a real hacker. You know she's drinking <laughs> wine at those rest stops, too. <laughs> yes, she is. Take her out. But the website, can, website thing is easy to overcome because you have a hosting company and they work with you. Social media mm-hmm. is free, and they do not need to work with you. I have to send my driver's Absolutely. license and everything. I did that over two weeks ago. Even though I've paid money, marketing money to Facebook, they're, they're delayed because of COVID. Um, oh, whatever. I, my life has turned around from it, too. Everyone's <laughs> it. But do not rely on social media or someone you do not pay to have your web, to, to do your website. If you have it, it can come down from a hack of any yep. nature from anywhere. Okay. And there wow. you go. that's my rant for the day. <laughs> so have a Well, website. I have to tell you, I have to tell you that um, even the about, I'd say about 20% of the people who mm-hmm. apply just with their website, mm-hmm. um, you know, and other social media, the website will be down about 20% of the time. And then we have to get a hold of the artist and say, mm-hmm. listen, this needs to go to panelists right now. You listed mm-hmm. your website. You put mm-hmm. your website up where all of your artwork is, is a huge percentage. You need to get that website running. And then the artists say, I didn't even know it was down. And then we say, we have, within five hours, we've got to send this to panelists. That's the deal of the agreement. Can you get it up? I hope so. You know, yeah, okay. so you're absolutely right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have to say this. I have to say this. Um, a website is your storefront, people. Check it every day, every it's morning. Like you get up, gallery. you check your website. No, if you're in business, you're trying to represent yourself, you're trying to market yourself, you're trying to sell your artwork, you get up, you check your website. You check it in the morning, and you check it at lunchtime, and you check it in the evening. Just like you do social media. Exactly. You check it. And and the website, oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble for this, is is the cornerstone. It is way more important than social media because – you, if you don't have a website, I am sorry. It's like all in the old days. If you didn't have a business card, you weren't in business. You may disagree with the yeah. concept, but it's a reality. So you have a website. Learn how to do it yourself. Well, there's plenty of places. There's plenty yeah. of places for if that. If you can't trust the, the the website company you're with, learn how to do it yourself. It's really not that hard. And make oh, and sure every day another, that it's up. And I mean, another thing, too, is uh, I am totally agreeing with you on that. It's the first yeah. thing that we go to with these applications, mm-hmm. and I think everybody yeah. does. And even if they did a regular application, you know, some panelists are going to want to know more about the person, so they search for their website, So even if they didn't list it. But the other thing <laughs> is social media. So... If you're going to list your social media on things, you might want to make sure that it's for public Good. viewing, you know, um, <laughs> because we've had a few, and we've all been there, we've all done that, okay, it's life, but do we, we maybe if you're going to list 
you know, don't your alias post. Facebook page. Don't yeah, we, maybe we don't want to know what you did on Halloween 10 years ago, you know, <laughs> uh, um, in a weird way. So, but no, but I do, though, because I love that know. kind of stuff. I think that's hysterical. Send Actually, it to me. I want to see it. But I'm, if, maybe you know, that's why I'm cut off. It's seriously, a biz- if you're a business and you are a business, if you're trying to market yourself, get a website. Make it a good one. Make sure you understand the hosting company. Make sure you pay the hosting bill because that's when your website goes down. Pretty much says you didn't pay your bill. Um, or learn to do it yourself. Okay, and take care of it because it's, that's the storefront to your business. And yeah. as far as social media, uh, I would suggest having a personal page separate from your business page because I. Uh, yes. Seriously, come I, on! I know people who have done. Come this, on! And don't don't let your girlfriend or boyfriend take control of your social media either. Oh, don't give them the password. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I've seen. I know. I personally, you know, I've some. You know, I know people that I've had to go. Did you know that this just happened? But so well, this is an interesting thing. I mean, when we think mm-hmm. about, you know, the process. I mean, this is an esteemed residency that <laughs> yeah. and I'm not on a rant I just I'm just trying to tell people like listen this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to be Absolutely. able to be in Hawaii volcanoes Chaco yeah. Canyon Chaco Cultural National Historical Park I mean that is a sacred space that is sacred and to be there for a month or for union you know Death Valley <laughs> you know some people dream of going to these parks just even for a day but to be there for a full month and really be able to focus on your craft. And what I love about MPAF, the National Parks Arts Foundation, and all the artists we've interviewed over the years, Tanya, is that they come in with an idea, they get to the park, it all changes because the park changes you. It changes you, yeah. especially if you're there for a month. Mm. I, you know, we do these crazy trips. I mean, we're in Pennsylvania when we were in Tampa <laughs> like a few hours ago, and I'm going – it's crazy. We go through a park. Hey, I'll take a snapshot, and that's what it is, to let people know, hey, this looks pretty cool. I don't know anything, but I'm coming back. But to be in an area for a full month, I know the difference from what we do oh, with the magazine the value. and our tour. There's this mm. night and day difference. It's, you will get in deep. It's like Anthony Bourdain yeah. versus the Food Network. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. Oh, I love Anthony Bourdain. That guy. I miss him. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And it's true. He, he didn't want to be Rachel Ray. He said hell no to that. He's like, here, and he's partying with Iggy Pop. And, you know, who wants that? Or do you want to be on the other side? No, no offense to the Food Network. That, millions <laughs> of people love it. But I'm just saying, as an artist, you you want the integrity side of this experience that's magical and unique and to people dream of that. So yeah, it is important to put your things together. You're going to need it whether you do the big application or the social media application. You're going to need to do it either way and it's good for you and during COVID times right now, especially musicians and those who aren't out in doing performances in public, it's a good time to do it and get get going with it. Um it's but uh, before we go, Tanya, tell us some of these awesome <laughs> destinations that are open now for people to apply. Okay, well, this is a biggie. Now um, that we've done our rant. I'm just saying. <laughs> now that you guys are the best for us, thank you so much for speaking up for artists. And I love yes. that you're also saying the logistics that are not that much fun that artists must do because yeah, absolutely. it's so important. Well, and listen, um, you go listen so. to all the interviews we've done with artists, and they'll tell you how much they love it. And they pretty much, I think every artist that has gone into a residency turns around and applies for another one. They all want to go to go back to the same place because even a month, once you dig into a place like Chaco, I don't think you could ever be done with Chaco. Like, there's just, I don't know. Oh, baby cakes? You know, so Nancy's talking to some animal somewhere in this house. I know. (laughs) Sorry. 
<laughs> anyway. Keep doing that because I'm looking up the deadlines right now. Okay, so what baby case are you talking to, Nancy? What, Sorry. What baby, oh, is that a dog or is it a human being? I want to know. It's a dog. I just wanted to know if there was a like a sexy baby case in the oh, house. <laughs> so you funny. never know. It's a little beagle. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to a 13-year-old beagle. And the beagle is not supposed to be in that room. Aww. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> but we're in an Airbnb in Springville that is really cool. It's called Top of the Mountain. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Guys, awesome. this, you overlooking mountains. There's deer and wild turkeys. It's beautiful. And a pool. Mm-hmm. We have a pool. It's kind of it's kind of like oh, your Hawaii what? house, Hawaii volcanoes house, Sonia. And with, turkeys. Oh my gosh. Uh, and turkeys with turkeys. <laughs> Hawaii so with we have turkeys. turkeys. We have turkeys. Well, yeah. Here. You do. So like, I, I do? am. Yeah, they're wild ones. They they they. What How would you call a herd Hawaii? of turkeys? A gaggle of turkeys. A flock. A gaggle of turkeys. Huh? Gaggle. I don't know. It's a gaggle. <laughs> but they run around the neighborhood. I love so them because they follow each other around in circles. Yeah. Well, now would be a so good time for Nancy to tell you. Go ahead. That pretty much all of the, well, I'm looking at the deadlines for the residencies here. Yeah. And everything in Hawaii, for Hawaii, expires September 4th. So in a Get month. on it. So that's not very much time. All of it, all of Hawaii one expires today. Um, oh. A bunch of stuff expires today. Um, and then um, it's all coming up really quickly for next year. And, again, we haven't had any cancellations at all because of COVID. Um, if they need to be delayed, we work it out with the artist. And um, okay. that's worked Good out enough. really well, too. But it's kind of, um, you know, it's even hard to say that because so many places have, have closed down. Even the Yellowstone um Another uh, nonprofit had a residency there up at Yellowstone, and um, they they closed it uh, about a month hmm. ago. I think it was a month and a half ago, and it's it's done. So we're probably gonna gonna bump Yellowstone up because they applied for our program years ago too. But um, anyway, the deadlines are now, everybody. Um, the next ones after that are in November, but there's only a couple left then. Hmm. Um, so, what are the ones yeah, in November? Let's see. Is that the September 4th deadline? November is Death Valley of 2020, 2022. Mm. Um, oh, wow. And as you know, we have to do these way ahead of time now because of federal funding deadlines. We have to have mm-hmm. somebody even a year in advance to be able to say, hey, NEA or whoever it may be, these people are coming on this date. We need to fund this. So um, we wish that we wish that we could even do some, and we have, as you know, if something comes up and we have extra money, we'll do something within a, a few days even. But um, these ones are are funded by, you know, we've got to have the budget a year earlier. Haleakala in Hawaii, Ooh. the uh, 2021 the expires there. in November. Mm, they're I there. Wanna, yeah, I want to apply for it. <laughs> We can't, but I want to. I want to apply that's, for that's it. That's a I want really to good Haleakala. one. Yeah. Nice. And the, the one that's Haleakala, that's interesting with Haleakala is we don't um, work very much with the Park Service. We say, hey, Park Service, do you want to have an artist, uh, you know, live there or do something? But we haven't been able to do that. Um, and they're totally great up there, by the way. The cool thing about it is, we get a house that's just outside of the park, often even with a pool um, that can house oh, like six people or something. And so we, we get uh, <laughs> we get a house right there, so they can go in the park anytime. And the park is, you know, the park service loves it and stuff. But um, the funding for even having events has gone down, so the the artists get to be very free <laughs> because that's they're not so cool. in the park. <laughs> that's so cool. That is awesome. It is. That's. It's it awesome for the cool. artist. I think it's awesome just to be able to be in the park and be able to like, okay, I need to study this leaf for all these reasons. You know, you had the one artist that came in and recorded all the sea creatures under the ocean. I mean, it's like, then they did all this crazy music with it. It's like, I think that's neat where you need to be able to have that focus. You don't get that anywhere. 
And a lot of times the residents says, you need to go sit up and paint here and do, you're not, it's maybe a week long, but I know the month is a big deal. Every artist we've talked to over the years is just like, they, they want even longer if they can get it, you know? Well, but, even, even the scientists at the park, you know, if somebody's doing something like that specific, like underground or underwater recording, mm. night sky photography, which has to do with the dark sky designations of the park, astronomy things, like mm-hmm. oftentimes we set them up with the scientists in the park. And oh, they're gosh, able to, cool. to get these, these, these opportunities that, um, you know, that are incredible, that people just like don't. Like swimming with manta rays. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, all of that. So it's, um, it's pretty cool when we are able to have an artist in a, in a good enough time that we can tell everybody at the park, look, this person is coming. Uh, you know, they want to do X, Y, Z. They want to go into a volcano. Um, is that something? And the scientists get all excited. Oh, we're studying. We're, we're studying what they're looking at as an artist. We're doing it as scientists. We would like to have have that communication mm. with them, you know. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so sometimes it gets That's included cool. in very, very um, scientific studies. It's very cool. Cool. So okay, I September deadline. So September fourth is a whole big deadline thing. So what are the yeah, parts for that? One. Those are all of the Hawaii parks. Let's see, all of the Hawaii parks. And then in October, it's Chaco. Um, oh, cool. Everything Gettysburg um, is expiring today. And we got, we got, for the first time, we got very, very low entries on Gettysburg. So that's going to be an hmm. interesting uh, and it's that because nobody with this, knows the COVID, COVID, you know. Yeah, COVID and scared yeah. to travel. It's COVID and also yeah. the heartbeat yeah. of what's happening right now in America, you know, socially. And um, yeah. so I think Gettysburg is a very interesting place right now, you know. it's a, So I think that could be part of it. And I encourage people that to go and, and learn the history a little bit more and go. That's part of the importance of these parks. And there's um, you just go and and check it out and learn it and you know parks. There are the places where you can learn the good, the bad, and the not so good. You know, so check yeah. it out. You need to and learn all of it. And as you know, as you know, before a lot of um, the riots started happening and everything, Gettysburg was inviting um, underserved um, communities there to have a voice. So mm. um, that that's very very cool. Of, unique. Of that's them. unique, and just how it should be. But it's just yeah. how it should be. It's, it it shouldn't be that it's like wow, this park includes all kinds of people, all parks, you know, do yeah. that. But it's it's nice that we've had artists there that have been able to, you know, to speak to what they're going through in their mind, and uh, you know, even uh, Queen Esther. Um, yeah, that, that was there in January. That was pretty powerful stuff. That was um, beautiful in her artwork, as well as something a lot of people didn't, uh, you know, weren't comfortable hearing. But still, yeah. she got to say it, so that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, totally Tanya, awesome. thank you for joining us. We're we're going to get cut off the show now. <laughs> Time is up. <laughs> Apparently. I got that little voice in my ear going, D seconds, it's time for you to go. So thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone go to nationalparksartsfoundation.org. You'll see all the residencies listed there. Get involved and also help. If you're not an artist or a musician and you want to be part of it, there are platforms there to donate as well and be part of it. And and just also support the art and the artists that go there uh, and watch for that and watch it on social media, nationalparksartsfoundation.org. Sign up for their newsletter. That's one of the best ways to keep up with everything. Um, the importance of a newsletter is really high at this point. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. Take care, Tanya. It is. It is. Thanks, 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 everyone. Guys. I love you. Have a good love weekend. Love you, too. Bye. You take care.